Once I was seven years old, my mama told me, go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. Once I was seven years old. It was a big, big world, but we thought we were bigger. Pushing each other to the limits, we were learning. Welcome back to Sports Therapy. Great show so far. Uh, it's been a privilege to have Grant Flick, who is going to be working for the Kansas City Royals this summer in the Dominican Republic, and Adam Willits on the show, a, a UNC diehard who was able to make it all the way down to Houston uh, this past weekend for the Final Four. But right now, i got to tell you my thought of the day. Today, my thought of the day comes from none other than, of course, the national championship this past Monday. All right, I talked about it a little bit with Adam, but I want to go a little bit more in depth on on, on my thoughts on this, okay? So, take us back to Monday. As I said in the first half, the refs were blowing the whistle like crazy. In fact, they called it eight straight times, uh, eight straight fouls against the Tar Heels in the first half of that game. Uh, just unbelievable uh, to see that in a, in a game with with that with those high, that high of stakes for these players, these guys that have worked as as hard as they have to make it here finally. But of course, they're impacted by the refs. Now, what I want to say is, you got to let them play. Too often, in my opinion, I feel that they play a major role in the outcome of a game in college basketball. Now, I realize, yes, they must must maintain the safety of the players, but come on. Monday night was the national championship. The national championship. It doesn't get any higher uh, than that. UNC was called for a crazy amount of fouls. Eight, as I said. That's right, eight in a matter of, of minutes in the first half. Now, yes, college basketball officials have placed um, a new ruling on hand-checking this year, and they've really been looking for that throughout the season. But, man, they were vicariously looking for it when UNC was playing on D. I didn't see much of it from from Villanova, okay? Some of these these fouls were just so ticky-tacky that I just could not believe it. But, I mean, it had a huge impact. It put Villanova on the line for one-and-ones. And and Villanova is one of the best free-throw shooting teams in the country and throughout the tournament. They have proven it. Uh, But I want to give you... Uh, a few Twitter reactions um, from this. Former Tar Heel John Henson wasn't pleased at all. He said, hey, at NCAA dot dot, do refs have subs during the game? Also, we have James Worthy, you know, a, a legend from the Tar Heels, tweeting, refs need to let both, all caps, teams play a little. Too many little touch calls. Hashtag NCAA championship. <laughs> Greg Little, former player on the football team at UNC, said, why are refs calling the game so soft? Brian Dawkins, NFL great, said, refs have sent whatever message they are trying to send. Time to let them play. Hashtag national championship. And then Eric Edholm said, these refs, dot, ticky, dot, tacky. And I, and I completely agree with that last statement. I mean, once again, in the biggest game of these young men's lives, they are hounded by refs seemingly every possession. Um, I, I just could not believe that some of these fouls were getting called on the heels um, and not called on the Wildcats. Yeah, I, I think you have to, as a ref, set the tempo of the game, make them know that you are there, but not the outcome of the game. You cannot cannot determine that. I don't think it completely determined the final outcome of Monday night's game, and, and there's no way you can ever say that. Come on. The refs are not playing the game. They, they have no opportunity to actually score for you. Um, but they can put, you know, make things happen. And, and, and you know, I'm not going to say that anything, you know, th- this is their job. They're supposed to call fouls. They're supposed to officiate throughout the game. But I think it is definitely something the NCAA needs to seriously take a look at because it did have a huge, huge impact on the way that UNC was able to play. UNC, their mojo is physicality down in the paint. Well, they were unable to do that with two or three fouls in the first half on multiple guys while they were playing defense. 
They were unable to get the ball in the paint, be physical, get to the basket. They kind of had to play a little tentative because they were, I mean, they were hounded right off the bat. I, and, and no, I'm not going to be one of those guys that said UNC lost because of the refs. You've seen that all over social media. You've seen that. You've heard that from everybody right and left that you've talked to this week, I'm sure. I'm not going to be that guy. But I am going to be the guy that says the NCAA needs to seriously look at this because that was absurd. That was a lot of fouls called right there. Um, this has to change in the future. You know, At the end of the day, Villanova did outplay UNC. If you look at the numbers, if you watch the game, Villanova outplayed UNC. From really every category, maybe outside of of, of the three point shots, because UNC could not miss from beyond the arc. But man, it, it's got to change. It, it, it's got to change. I hated to see it. It was tough to see that have such a relevant and such a big impact on the final outcome of the game. But anyways, you know that that's my thought of the day. I just think it's got to change uh, in terms of referee, in terms of especially a game like that. Uh, it's got to change. So we're gonna go to another quick break. But when I come back in, I'm really excited to have a good friend of mine, Matt Krause. As I said earlier, he he works for the IMG Sports Network now out of Winston-Salem. Um, and, and he is with both Pittsburgh Uni- University of Pittsburgh and Marshall University calling games for them. So really excited to have him on to talk a little bit about uh, college basketball, to talk a little bit about this season and then, of course, his career. Uh, so don't go anywhere and come back and listen here on Sports Therapy. <laughs> 